Coming up in this edition of Sports Links, be a fan. We'll take a deeper look at tennis player Austin Smith's family ties to Ball State. And we even have a special in-studio guest from the football team. All that and more coming up on Sports Links, be a fan. Ball State Sports Links, be a fan. Driven by Muncie Nissan. Shift the way you move. Hello and welcome to another edition of Ball State Sports Links, be a fan show. Driven by Muncie Nissan. I'm Josh Blessing. And I'm Ashley Reed. Ashley, we have a jam-packed show for everyone this month. In addition to our in-studio guests, we're going to see how important the Cardinal Varsity Club is to Ball State Athletics. And we'll learn more about how softball outfielder Jenny Gilbert spent her summer. Let's get started. Ball State Athletics and Austin Smith's family has a long history together. This year, the Cardinal tennis player is having a great sophomore season, and it's no surprise when you know the history. Here's the Austin Smith story produced by Paul Brown and Brad Daly, presented by Robin's Apparel. Parents and family definitely had a big influence on coming to Ball State. My mom, all her sisters, and a lot of my um, mom's side of the family all attended Ball State. And really had a really good experience here. Being um, fairly close to home, having grandparents in the community, um, having had you know his mom growing up here and you grow up with a little bit of Ball State blood in your veins and I would have to think that it, it played some role in it. Here in Muncie, Austin is two hours from home but only five minutes from family. My grandparents live here in Muncie so uh, I always have them in touch if I, anything should go wrong or anything like that. We get together often. I mean, it's not just holidays, but it's just sometimes we, we just, you know, get together. Usually it's around an athletic event, you know, of some sort. Terry and Linda have been watching Austin play sports since he was as tall as a tennis racket. He played basketball and then the tennis and, then go and golf. He was, a, he was a super athlete growing up. I mean, he could play any sport. And finally, you know, one of the coaches said, Austin, you're, you can be as good as you want to be, but you have to give up other sports. Austin's focus on tennis paid off, achieving first-team All-State honors all four years of high school and becoming the top-ranked 18-year-old in Indiana. He came to Ball State, but not just because of family. The great history and success that this program's had. I wanted to be on a team that was going to win and be successful and also improve my game instead of staying where I was at. Austin dealt with ankle and back injuries his freshman year, but this spring he's bounced back, winning more than two thirds of his matches. He's got a lot of determination, and I think he got he got a lot of that from his mom. Austin isn't the first tennis player in his family to be coached by Bill Richards. I was giving his, his, his mom and sisters lessons over at Woodworth Courts when they were little kids. Tara Lynn Schur played tennis at Ball State from 1981 to 1984. So how did Tara Lynn's tennis game compare to Austin's? Very patient. I would say that she was a lot more patient than he, than he is, but she wasn't. I don't think she reached his uh, level. I haven't heard too many stories about my mom playing, but um, I've seen pictures and stuff of my grandpa wearing or wearing his jersey and stuff, cutting down nets here at Ball State. Carey was a guard at Ball State, the leading scorer on the team, and captain his senior year. In 1957, the Cardinals advanced to the NAIA National Tournament. Being a small school, that was a big thing for us to participate in that national tournament. Terry later became a professor and researcher at Ball State, where he met the Cardinals' new tennis coach, Bill Richards. At noon, we had like the um, staff, faculty staff, the joggers, and yeah, I used to jog with him and, and, and talk to him and, and so forth. And then, of course, then Terry and uh, took lessons from him and, and uh, 
so known him for quite a while. Austin's first time meeting Bill Richards was in high school when Bill coached his junior Davis Cup team. Again, the family, just history with Coach Richards and knowing him, what type of guy he is. and um, I knew he would push me to my potential, so that's what I wanted in a coach. To get to know him as a person and to, to see what an incredible, tough competitor he is, um, don't think I would have known all that if I hadn't had that opportunity. Three generations of family all connected to one man. There's, uh, you know, Ball State history there. There's the Richard Schur family history there. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's pretty neat. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Paul Brown. And Ashley, as I was watching that story, it was really cool for me to see Austin progression from last season as I covered the team. He really struggled with an ankle, ankle injury, and it's really positive to see that once he's healthy, look what he's able to do out there on the court. Definitely sounded like coming off that injury, he's been making the most of his season. They said he's winning two-thirds of his games, so that's great. Pretty impressive. Being a Division I athlete takes discipline, hard work, and dedication. Sophomore outfielder, outfielder Jenny Gilbert has all three. As if playing softball during the school year wasn't enough, Gilbert also represents her home country by playing for the Canadian national team. See what she took away from these experiences in this story produced by Ben Johnston, Luke Magsman, and Kevin Thurman. Presented by WMDH. <laughs> Throughout Jenny Gilbert's career, she's called many fields home, but crossing the plate at Ball State is one of many runs in her life. I was born in uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Uh, I know it's a mouthful, but I moved there, moved to Texas when I was about two years old, so I pretty much had grown up in uh, the state. I would uh, say that climate-wise is a big difference um, in Indiana than Texas. You know, Texas, is, you know, it's you know dry heat and you know it's hum humid, and you know in Indiana, you know I wasn't used to like all the snow. That was you know a definite like big factor. I chose Ball State because they had exactly what I wanted to study. Uh, they had a great softball program. I really liked the coaches. Um, I liked the girls when I met a few of them on my uh, unofficial visit. And uh, just like overall, like the campus was really pretty. I liked, you know, how like everything was set up. And I just knew like as soon as I stepped on the campus that I wanted to come here. We're going out and watching kids play and um, talking to club coaches probably a lot. And maybe a little bit high school coaches. And no, the process wasn't really any different with her. I mean. You know, she was playing with uh, her club coach, with somebody that I used to coach against in junior college. You know, I got an opportunity to talk with her about Jenny and, you know, went from there. Representing your school is one thing, but representing your country is another. For Jenny Gilbert, she has both. Um, I was actually uh, emailing coaches uh, for recruiting, and I emailed uh, the Nebraska coach, who used to be the head coach for the senior national team. And uh, I just basically said, you know, in every email it was always had been a dream of mine to play for the Canadian national team someday. And uh, she ended up forwarding that email to the junior coach and he sent someone out to watch me play and he liked what he saw, so I got a spot on the team. I think part of her being a better outfielder is right now is that, that she went and spent the summer really working on her outfield skills. Um, you know, and, and it's good for her to be able to go play year round. You know, I think there's some drawbacks, and I think there, to some, at some point there's going to be a little bit of fatigue because other kids are going and taking summers off, not necessarily not doing anything, but not playing a ton of softball over the summer, whereas she's going in the summer and playing, and then she just played over pretty much the whole Christmas break. For Jenny Gilbert, softball is not just a sport. It's her life. I'd have to say that the most influential person has been my mom. Um, she, you know, has always, you know, worked with me. Um, you know, she didn't play softball when she was younger, so whenever I was little and, you know, I knew that I wanted to play in college from like the age of, you know, eight, I knew I wanted to play. Um, you know, she would just, you know, search everything out, find me the best team, you know, with the best coaches. She would take me to the World Series every year to watch, you know, the big players and everything. And I just, you know, had kind of grown up around that and so, I mean, that's really the, all that I have ever known, pretty much. Well, I've grown up with softball around my life, you know, and I mean, it's all that I know, pretty much. I couldn't see myself working at a desk or, like, pretty much, you know, taking orders. I know softball, you know, so well. I love it. I love coming out here, you know, every day to practice or, like, in a game. So 
it would just be awesome if I could use that and make a living from that, helping other girls reach that same goal. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Ben Johnston. All right, and we're back, and I'm joined with senior quarterback Kelly Page from the football team. Thanks for joining me, Kelly. You're welcome, Ma. And uh, you look a little bit different from the last time you were on the show. Uh, what's going on up here? Have you had a little, a little cleaned up for spring ball? Okay, well, I like it. You're looking fresh. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so you guys, the spring uh, practice is starting up pretty soon here. How excited is the team um, to get back on the field? Oh, uh, you know, we're very excited. Uh, you know, we felt a little left out last year, uh, being six and six. You know, not being into the uh, the bowl games and whatnot. Uh, you know, but we've just been really working hard this winter uh, in the weight room, on the field, uh, in the classroom, just trying to get better. Now, when you do get left out like you guys did this past season, how much determination does that add for this coming season to really get back there and leave no doubt? Um, you know, we're just trying to do the little things right, you know. Uh, we lost a couple games last year that we feel like we could have won um, that could have put us over that hump to get to a bowl game. And uh, I feel like we're just really trying to concentrate on those things, you know, get a little bigger in the weight room, get a little stronger. Um, and really focus on our playbook and get to know our players really well. So Now, you talked about the weight room. What have you been working on specifically in the weight room or maybe just on the field? Uh, you know, uh, with Coach Feely, uh, you know, he emphasizes, you know, we're just trying to go up there and, and be intense throughout all the workouts. Um, we've been throwing up some crazy numbers, numbers that we've, some of these guys have never seen before, um, and we're getting a lot stronger. Uh, for myself personally, I've been trying to be a better leader. Um, we've got a, a group of great seniors out there this year, and we're, gonna, we're trying to lead the team and uh, try to get to a bowl game. Now, you talked about Coach Feely's um, very intense um, workout program. What is this program like on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, it's really structured. We go in there, and uh, we do abs right away. You know, we get that core work in. Uh, we run a lot. Um, we're going to be running a lot more in the summer. Um, but, you know, we're just going in there. Um, throwing around a lot of weight, doing more Olympic lifting than we ever have before. Um, and I think it's really showing and uh, it's really benefiting some of our guys. You guys have a couple transfers coming in this year that are going to be able to play. You have Jonathan Newsom from Ohio State and then running back from Tennessee and Tony Williams. What do each of those guys you think will be able to bring to the team? Uh, you know, Tony Williams is a, a really elusive type of, type of runner. Uh, you know, he's, he's really fast, he's, he, he's elusive, but I think he can also lower his shoulder as well. Um, Jonathan Newsom, uh, we saw him all spring or all, all, all season last year on our scout team actually since he was here with us uh, and our offense saw him uh, all the time and he's, he's going to be a tear in the MAC. I think that he's just going to be a great player for us and you do a lot of great things for our defense. All right, Kelly, I appreciate it. That's all the time we got. Always a pleasure. Yes, sir. All right, gymnastics has been a part of Athens Seamer's life since she was a young child. It's a part of her life that she simply cannot live without. Find out how she uses gymnastics to organize her daily life as we continue our In Focus series with this story produced by Brad Daly and Tony Williams. My name is Afton Seymour. I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I do three events, compete three events. I train four of them. I think floor would be my strongest like high scoring event, but vault's my favorite to compete. It's just a lot of adrenaline rush and I just like the atmosphere at the meet. It's a whole life process. I started kind of late. I think I was eight, almost nine when I started and then just kind of rolled through the levels. I know girls that start from when they're two years old can first start walking and rolling on the floor and then finish when they're 21, 22, 23. So it's like a whole life thing and you never go really more than a week without doing gymnastics. I think gymnastics, it's all about time management. It's taught me just how to like keep my life in order. Even like in practice and everything, you just, you gotta go to bars, be done by this time, finish this assignment by this time. You like have to always finish everything. So I feel like it like helps in life a lot. High school was pretty much wake up, school, gym, come home, make my own dinner, go to bed, restart my day every day. It was just kind of individual by myself. There were times when I would get super just like exhausted through my week and just realize like oh, I don't want to do this I don't want to go I just don't feel like it but then I knew in the back of my mind like I didn't work all these years to not make it to college or get somewhere so I like need to do this for myself to be able to finish up and not quit and know what like I need to do to get forward in life.
And another special congratulations to two other gymnasts who earned all Mid-American Conference honors. Julie Cotter and Nicole Allen were both named to the All-MAC teams. So congratulations once again to both of them. For most athletes, it's four years and done. But for Jeff Acoin, he wanted one more shot at the game he came to love. After hearing people tell him he wasn't fit for Division I volleyball, he proved them all wrong. Learn more on this story by Paul Weller, Chris Wrinkle, and Katie Hargett, presented by Fox College Sports. It's why they play the game. It makes all the aches and pains worthwhile. It makes every win seem so much better, and every loss stings a little more. It's the love for the game they play. Jeff Alcoin discovered his love for volleyball in an unexpected way. I thought I was going to gym class and volleyball in middle school, so I took it up and it just went from there. He originally went to tryouts for lacrosse, and when he came home, I said, how'd tryouts go? He goes, um, I didn't go, I went to volleyball tryouts. I said, it's, that's a junior varsity sport, it's not even for seventh grade. He goes, yeah, but they loved me. Looking ahead, Jeff wasn't sure if volleyball was in his future, but heading to college, he couldn't leave behind the game he had grown to love. Coming out of high school, I didn't think I was good enough. I actually started off at a Division II school at New Haven and started off with the program there. Didn't really like it, so I went up to New Hampshire and played for their club team. Starting off my freshman year, we only had seven kids on the team, and I started to, I developed that team. We got all the way up to about over 20 kids my senior year. And each year we started growing and growing, being able to accomplish more and more. His senior season, Jeff led the Wildcats to a national championship, earning MVP honors. It was the highlight of his time at New Hampshire. Being able to come back my senior year and win the national championship and the MVP, that's just a dream come true I never thought I'd be able to achieve. Everything I could have accomplished, I accomplished at UNH. I had, I never thought of playing Division One coming out of high school, but then after playing with the club level and playing around the adult leagues and mass and still being able to dominate force at that level, I thought, hey, might as well give it a try. I'm young, I can still transfer, I still have time. For most athletes, winning a national championship and MVP awards would be enough to call it a career, but not for Jeff. He still had one more goal to achieve, playing volleyball at the highest collegiate level, Division One. I. I think we started around December. I was writing letters, contacting people, trying to actually figure it out, and it was just a big long waiting game. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and Jeff wasn't attracting much attention from Division I coaches. And on top of that, since this was his second time transferring, the NCAA still had to clear Jeff to play another year. But in early May, some hope arrived in the form of an email from a coach in Muncie, Indiana. I found out about a week before Mother's Day, Joel emailed me and said that my waiver was approved by the NCAA to come compete this year. So the second I got that email, I didn't tell anybody except for a couple close friends. I bought some Ball State t-shirts that day, Ball State volleyball t-shirts, wrapped them up because my family was having Mother's Day that weekend. So I drove down to Boston and I gave my mom the box with the t-shirts in it and the letter that said that my waiver was approved. And um, it brought tears to her eyes. She was excited for me. I'm getting emotional just thinking of it. That was, that was her Mother's Day present. He came, came home because we have Mother's Day party. It was an email from Joel saying that he was accepted. My heart was beating like out of my chest for him. It was, I felt so proud. First couple times it was discouraging. Having to try to come to the Division One level for the past three years before that, always getting rejected by the coaches. I just had no thoughts. I just wanted to get into the real world and started off. Being able to finally come out to this Division One level and play those coaches that said no to me, it's great to play against them and show them what I have. Well, we've gone to every game and not being able to be here for him, it's very hard. You know, he's farther away, but he's grown. Uh, he's, in the last couple of years, he's really matured a lot. He's a mature kid, and you would hope to see that from somebody that's already been in college for four years, and it really proved out. After this season, Jeff's collegiate playing career will be done. All the awards and accomplishments he has achieved have made his career successful. But what's most important to Jeff is that for the past five years, he has been able to play the game that he loves. He's coming to Ball State right now for no scholarship money from us, 
Uh, he was able to get a, a grad assistantship in the Learning Center. So he's essentially working to have the opportunity to play this one season of volleyball here at Ball State. You're always hoping that your kid accomplishes or, or just survives in this world. And he's found something that is his um, and it's what he wants to do. It feels great to be here. It feels great to compete each and every day. It's the opportunity that I've been waiting for for five years. All those coaches saying no before, but Joel finally giving me the yes. It's been great. I can't ask for more. For Ball State Sports Link, I'm Chris Rankle. And you really have to love the emotional stories like that in Ball, mm -hmm. Ball State Athletics. It really makes you love sports. All right, Ashley. Well, we're going to do one of my favorite segments of the of the month. We're going to pick out the top five plays for your Ball State Athletics. Definitely one of my favorites, too. I'm especially excited because of the variety of sports that we have this month. I think it's a little different from the past couple months. A lot of basketball. Sounds good to me. Let's check out number five on our top five plays of the month. At number five, we got Jasmine Hitchens from the women's basketball team. You leave her wide open, she's going to drain it in your face almost every time. Top of the arc, three ball from her. Number four here, we have senior Julie Cotter on the bars. Something she seems to be very good at. Cotter won the Mid-American Conference Championships with a score of 9.875. Now, Ashley, we talked about this the other night. Did you do gym gymnastics back in the day? I did, I did. Did you, no. uh, can you pull this off? Take no, this off. Wasn't, didn't quite get to that level. All right, well, don't worry about it. Me either. <laughs> and at number three, we got some track and field for you. Let's see if I can pronounce this right. Hannah Ka uh, Kiasto, poor pole vault getting high above the bars. Impressive display by her. Number two, here we have basketball up against Central Michigan at home. Tyra Robinson with that crossover layup and one. There, there you see his athleticism. Yeah, teammate helping him up here. There you, sorry about that. There you see his athleticism crossover driving in the lane, something that he did all season very well for the Cardinals. And at number one, we got men's volleyball hosting Ohio State Buckeyes. The Cardinals hadn't beaten the Buckeyes since 2008, but you know what? They get it, get the job done here. The Buckeyes have beaten the Cardinals 11 straight wins going into that match. And actually, it was really cool to watch that match because our last month's show, I actually interviewed Coach Walton, and he talked about how big of a, a win that would be for the Ball State program to knock them off. And you know what? A couple weeks later on, it happens. Definitely a big victory, and hopefully they can use that to help propel them onto their upcoming tournament. And not only has Ball State been excelling on the court, but Ball State athletes excel off the court as well. Ball State has a 75% graduation rate among all of its student athletes and was ranked first in the Mid-American Conference. The amount of success is due in part to the support of the Cardinal Varsity Club. Let's learn more about the CVC in this story produced by Ben Wagner and Pat Boylan, presented by Table X. The Cardinal Varsity Club was formed many years ago to be a fundraising arm to help support the university, raise funds um, for scholarships, new equipment, upgrade facilities, that kind of thing. So. We share a common bond, and that is that we're committed to Ball State Athletics. It's a, it's a way that uh, fans and supporters of the Ball State Cardinal athletic teams um, can be involved with our programs and, and offer us financial support. And it's a huge piece of the support network for our athletic programs, our coaches, and our student athletes. I could go back to the Schumann Stadium project. The, the gift from the Schumanns certainly made that possible, and it wouldn't have happened without that, that donation. But other organizations and the Ball State Foundation were conducting a capital campaign at that time, and CVC helped promote that and encourage people to become members and earmark part of their money to go to that campaign. Two years ago, I received a phone call out of the blue from a gentleman named Earl Dunn. And um, he, he had me in tears on the phone because he described that his wife had just passed away and they'd been married for over 40 years and, and he was just devastated and, um, and, and rightfully so. And, and in her memory, they wanted to support our women's golf team. So he actually took her wedding and engagement ring and, and gave us the proceeds. But it's not just about those big major donors, it's about the season ticket holders who are maybe giving just a few hundred dollars a year to the CVC, all of those small gifts add up and they allow our athletic programs to do a lot of things that our operating budgets otherwise would not cover. 
join us because we're committed to Ball State Athletics, we're committed to the student athletes, we want them to have a good experience in and out of the classroom. Um, there's some perks that come along with being a member depending on what level you join. You have an opportunity to interact with the student athletes and other p people that share that commitment of, of their love for Ball State Athletics. For someone who is considering donating you know, please understand that, that your money goes to good use and we use that money to, to purchase team gear, uh, team equipment, to travel the tournament. So um, I mean, it is 100% going towards our needs. One of the keys to our future in building a successful football program but also athletic pro programs across the board is to get new people involved, uh, to, to cast a, a, a wider net and make more people feel like they're part of the team and part of the family here at Ball State. Well, that's all the time we have for this month's edition of the Be A Fan Show. I'm Ashley Reed. I'm Josh Blessing, and we'll see you next month.